Welcome to the Breakthrough Advisor Podcast. In this podcast, we inspire advisors with ideas and pathways to break through barriers and build a thriving retirement income business. We will interview innovative technology developers, business leaders, and successful advisors, then help you organize and execute these ideas to move your business forward. Hello and welcome to The Breakthrough Advisor. I'm your host, Eric Johnson, and today I'm speaking with Patrick Kelly. Patrick is an Amazon best-selling author. Tax-Free Retirement and Stress-Free Retirement are two of the books out of six he's written. He's very passionate about helping financial advisors reach more consumers with concepts around income tax, legacy, and retirement. He's the founder of Tax-Free Retirement way back in 2007 and has over 30 years of experience in the industry. Patrick, how are you today? I'm doing great, Eric. Good to be with you. Thank you. I am so pleased that you joined me on this podcast, that you're here. Thank you for taking the time out to have a great discussion with me. I know that you, I mean, six books, that's a lot of writing. <laughs> it has. It's been a labor of love, but one that I have indeed loved in the process. Of the six books, you told me before we started this that they've sold over a million copies. Congratulations. That's, that's a huge accomplishment. Thank you. Yeah. It, you know, when I first did it, I didn't know if we'd sell a single copy. And uh, obviously, so it's been an incredible journey. It's been a wonderful surprise to see uh, how this whole thing has taken off. But I think the reason for that, Eric, is because it's a message. And I'll tell you a little bit about it probably in a little bit in my story. But it's a message that people have never heard, but it's been around for a long time. And so my first book really I think filled a void that people didn't even know was there. And the first book that that's tax free retirement. Correct. Yeah. Tax free okay. retirement. All right. So I have two questions. Which one is the best selling book? And then which book is actually your favorite? Ah, good question. Well, tax free retirement has sold the greatest number of copies. I don't have an exact number right now, but it's it by itself is creeping up somewhere between 750,000 and a million copies. The others, the two other best sellers would be Stress-Free Retirement and The Retirement Miracle. And each of those are respectively in the hundreds of thousands of copies themselves, but I don't have a, a an exact total. As far as my favorite, that's like asking you to pick your favorite child. Oh, come uh, on. <laughs> Just pick no, one. It, <laughs> uh, because, yeah, right. On any given day, you like some children better than others, right? No, uh, but you love them all the same. I would say those three that I mentioned are my top three. But the reason I sort of couch it that way is each one of these books has a unique message. And I don't think I would have taken the time to put anything in print that I didn't feel was an important message for the consumer to hear. So it really depends on who the reader is and which book is most pertinent to their situation. You named three of them. So I'm going to actually name the other three. And that's the five retirement myths, the life insurance dilemma, and seven secrets to a happy retirement. That is quite a list. In, in your first book, Tax Free Retirement, what actually motivated you to write that? You know, and I, I alluded to this a second ago, but I'll take it back a little before the book. I had a, a situation like many of your listeners probably here, back in the tech, during the tech bubble, that I listened to a stockbroker friend of mine and followed his advice and lost a lot of money uh, when the tech bubble burst. And I was really discouraged by that. I mean, I mean, I was in the financial industry myself, but I, I was not doing stocks at the time other than just for my own portfolio. And I realized, you know what? That didn't feel good. I don't want to do that again. I never want to be in a situation where I sustain a big loss. So I spent about a year digging in and I understood the financial markets quite well even back then, which is almost 30 years ago. And I said, but I want to find the one thing that I feel like can sustainably build wealth without risk long term. And so when I discovered that, and that's what my book Tax Free Retirement is about, I started sharing this concept. It wasn't something I created. This had been around for decades and decades. Matter of fact, it was a product that I had at my very fingertips, but I didn't fully understand it. And so I started to share that with my clients. And almost invariably, my clients would say, Patrick, come on, if this is as good as you say it is, if this is what you say it is, and it's been around for decades, how have I never heard about it before? And so I did, uh, Eric, probably what you would have done. I went to a local bookstore to find a book that I could give to them 
to back up and support what I was talking about. And there was nothing, not one single book on the topic. Well, a little other background about me. I was a writing major in college. I liked to write. I wanted to write sort of the great American novel someday. Still do. But at the time, I thought, well, I like to write. Why don't I fill that void? And so really, I did it first and foremost to share the whole picture with individuals, with consumers, so they could understand, like I said, this void that they didn't even know existed. Obviously, it's a huge topic. I mean, this is, I mean, the title of the book just grabs you right off the bat, right? Tax free retirement. I am not in retirement, by the way, if you didn't know that, <laughs> but my parents are. <laughs> I know that a lot of my other family members are, and that would be something that would be fantastic. So, what would you consider are the top couple points from your book? Eric, first, I want to address what you said, and that is that you're not in retirement, nor am I. And this book is written for those not yet in retirement. This is written for those, matter of fact, the earlier you start this strategy, the better it becomes for retirement. And the nice thing about it, unlike tax qualified plans, which we might talk about throughout this call at some point, you can start this for children and grandchildren when they're first born. And so that gives them the leverage of extra decades and decades that others don't have. And so it's it's not a book for those that are retired. It's for those that are currently working and saving for retirement. Just want to hit that first. As far as my favorite points of the book, just a couple things for the listeners. Part two it talks about the nine financial landmines. Part three talks about the four hidden retirement traps, the tax trap, the access trap, distribution trap, the death trap. So there's a lot of material in this book, but quite frankly, far and away, the number one message resides in the title itself, tax-free retirement. I want individuals to realize that it really is possible to build a retirement that they can access 100% income tax-free, at least based on today's current tax laws, if they do some things properly. It's really easy to do, they just need to work with an individual who fully understands the strategy. So that would far and away be the number one that, yes, it is possible, but there's two other quick ones that I wanna throw in. The second is that it's possible because people don't really think they can do this. It's possible to build market-like gains without sustaining any losses in this strategy, and it's guaranteed. The third thing is for them to realize that it's more important to protect against losses long term than it is to hitting home runs. So again, that they can build a tax-free retirement, that they can capture a part of the market's growth in the good years without having any exposure to loss in the bad years. And then the last thing is that protecting against loss is more important than hitting home runs. You said it a moment ago that this is really people need to find an advisor that understands these strategies that they can work with, correct? Correct. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you from the advisor point of view, it seems to me that financial advisors should be picking these books up so they can understand these strategies if they're not already working with these strategies so that they can actually work with more clients in a more effective way. Would you agree with that statement? I would. And I would say a vast majority of my books have been initially purchased by advisors. And then they have enjoyed it not only from an education piece, but a messaging piece. And, and they have then bought them consequently to give away to their consumers so that the consumers can understand really in the privacy of their own home, whether this is a fit for them or not. So I guess I would say this, if perchance you're listening to this today and you've received a book from an advisor, the likelihood and almost certainty is that that advisor understands very well what I'm talking about in these books, or they would not have given you that in the first place. You've spoken with, I'm sure, hundreds, if not thousands of advisors in your time doing the work that you do. For them, I'd like this answer for them and for me. I'll be selfish. <laughs> for me, what are the most common mistakes people make when it comes to saving for retirement? Because I'm sure I'm probably making a mistake or two that I need to learn from. There are a lot of mistakes we all make. And again, I, I made a couple big ones. And, and thankfully, I turned those lemons into lemonade and have decided to do something about it and share those message points 
throughout my books with consumers so they wouldn't have to make the same ones. But I think right now, Eric, this the number one most significant mistake people are making and likely don't even know they're making is not considering the possible ramification of the future of taxes, of what happens to their current savings if taxes go up. And do we have a couple of minutes I can share and dig into that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Because I think it's more important to dig into that now than ever before, especially with all the stimulus packages that have gone out in the last year during COVID. And I mean, trillions and trillions of dollars have been doled out by the government. And from what I understand, they're going to want it back. <laughs> we can't continue like we're going. I'll just give you a little history on that. When I published my first, well, tax for retirement back in 2007, I did a, a workshop in 2008 and I wrote this number down. And back in 2008, our official national debt, and I'm not even going to get into the difference between the official and the real. That's a whole conversation by itself. But the official reported national debt then was $9.3 trillion. In 12 years to February of this year, it went from $9.3 trillion to $23 trillion. It's a 149% increase. Now think about that. Our country was 232 years old in 2008. And in 12 years, it added an additional 150% of what it took 232 years to add. Well, in the last, since February, so it's now... September, or excuse me, October, just turned October, in the last eight months, we have added to our national debt another four and a half trillion dollars the last time I looked. So here's the thing. Now, what people don't realize, and this is where I say it's very significant to think about the future of taxation, where most people are encouraged to save their retirement dollars by their accountant and by their companies is in their 401k or other tax qualified plans, right? I mean, that's what you hear about. Well, those tax qualified plans, they might even hear and everything, all of these, so 401k, IRS, SEP, simple, 403b, all of those letters, I like to call them the alphabet super retirement, they all fall under the same heading, the same tax qualification of a tax qualified plan. So when I mentioned tax qualified plan or TQP, that refers to all of those programs. Well, they're encouraged even by their accountants often, hey, because I was, if you put money into your 401k, you're going to save on taxes. Well, here's the reality. They're not, we're not saving on taxes, they're simply delaying their taxes. Mm -hmm. And Eric, I'll just ask you, when was the last time delaying a problem ever made it better? <laughs> yeah. uh, I've got an example, I've got a couple more things to share on this before we move on, if you don't mind, because I think yeah. this more than anything else is one of the things I really want listeners and readers to understand. Because if you don't understand the problem, you're not going to be passionate about the solution. And, and this is an analogy I did not make up. I heard it from another peer in my industry, but it's so good I wanted to share it to illustrate it. Because when you put it in these terms, you realize, and then I'll give you what the terms are as far as the tax potential. But the, the analogy is this. Eric, if you wanted to buy a new house, and let's say it's a $500,000 home, four hundred doesn't matter, some large purchase. And you went to the bank and the bank said, Eric, you know what? Congratulations. Your income is stable. We're going to give you the loan. We're going to let you buy this $500,000 house. But here are the terms of the loan. We're going to give you the money so you can buy it today, but we're not going to tell you what the interest rate is on that loan <laughs> till the end of it in 30 years. Ah. And just so you know, we can make it any rate we want to at the end of 30 years. Would you take that loan? That's when I walk away. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> no, thanks. L let me ask you, would anyone that you know take that loan? No. No. But do you realize, Eric, every single time you or I or anyone else puts money into a tax qualified plan like a 401k, they have done the exact thing as taking that loan. Because here's what happens. The government says, hey, put your money in this and you don't have to pay tax on it today. And by the way, right now, our tax rates are the lowest they've been in the last 100 years. So we'll get back to that in a second. Mm -hmm. So they say, hey, put it in here. 
and you get to not pay tax on it. Again, it's not a tax savings, it's a tax delay. So then 30 years go by, just like that home mortgage, and the government says, okay, you want your money now, guess what? You're going to pay tax at whatever tax rate is in place 30 years from now. And here's a couple of the data points I wanna give you. What people don't realize is with COVID, our debt to GDP ratio just surpassed its all time high in 1945 of 106% during World War II. It's normally 34, 35%, meaning the debt we carry as a nation as a percent of our total economy is usually around 35, 40%. It just hit 107%, which is the all time highest. Now, before 1944 and 1945, tax rates were as low and a little lower than they are today. But because of that debt to GDP ratio, the reason we got it back down is during the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, 16 of those 30 years, the top marginal tax bracket was above 90%. It peaked in 1944 and 1945 at 94%, meaning that yeah. people only got to keep six cents of every dollar they made. And that's how they brought that debt to GDP ratio back down. So I would just propose this. If that's what happened last time we had a debt to GDP ratio this high and tax rates are at an all time low, there's only two ways we can get out of the, this debt problem. We can spend less or we can tax more. Well, as we see with what's going on, we're not spending less. So I'll leave it up to the listener to decide. But all of that to say, if you could pay taxes today, at one of the lowest rates in the last 100 years and not have to worry about what future tax rates do, just like you wouldn't take that 30-year mortgage without knowing the terms, why would you do that with your retirement savings when there's a better option? It would be, kind of be insane to not. Wow. That's that's very, very eye-opening. And, and unfortunately, I know that there is a debt clock or a debt calculator online that I have visited on a couple different occasions. And by the end of this podcast, I'm sure you know this as well. By the end of this podcast, by the time our listeners are done listening to it, the national debt has probably gone up by around $85 million just in the time they're listening to this podcast. If you look at that and the, the speed in which those digits are clicking over, <laughs> right. and quite frankly, Eric, the thing we haven't even talked about, the reason it's even remotely sustainable right now is because interest rates are so low. If we begin to ever have an interest rate spike, that is a whole different level of problem. Patrick, one of your books is titled The Five Retirement Myths, which by the way, I love the title. Can you tell us what those myths are? Absolutely. Three of these books, this being one of them, the, the first three we mentioned, Stress-Free Retirement, Tax-Free Retirement, The Retirement Miracle, those are all full-length books. Mm -hmm. These other three are kind of almost like I call them Kindle singles. They're about 30, 35-page books, very direct to the point. And this is one of those. It's about 35 pages long. And so the five myths that I talk about in this are, number one, buy and hold always wins. Mm. Again, that's a myth. Buy and hold doesn't always win. I give examples of, especially as we went through sort of the lost decade after the credit crisis, how that wasn't necessarily the case. Myth number two, you can't make big returns without taking big risks. That also is a myth. You can make very significant returns without taking any risk in many cases. Uh, myth number three, average returns tell an accurate story. I might mention that later on in our podcast here, because average returns that everybody reports aren't accurate at all. Myth number four, you can effectively manage your own portfolio. I find that not to be a very workable proposition based on my own mistakes. Even though I'm good at doing it you know, for others, I'm not very good at doing it for myself. There's a different mentality there. And then chapter five is if something is really that good, everybody would be doing it. And I think the reason that's there is because as I've shared these concepts with people, they they say that, say, Patrick, if this is this good, why would never one do it, be doing it? Well, because they don't know it even exists. So those are the five myths. Patrick, in your second book, The Retirement Miracle, you have a chapter entitled The Big Lie. What's the lie? Eric, the big lie is simply that the average returns 
that get reported to the consumer by mutual fund prospectuses or even the stock market averages are not the actual returns that consumers experience. And you think that sounds ludicrous. What do you mean? Well, let me give you an example. Because average returns and actual returns are not the same. So if you took, and I'll use a heightened example to illustrate this point, if you had a thousand dollars and you lost 50% in one year mm -hmm. and gained 50% in the second year, <laughs> the average return of that is zero, right? Because zero, positive 50 minus or negative 50 plus 50 is zero, zero divided by two is zero. So a mutual fund could say their average return was zero for those two years. Mm -hmm. But the actual return, let's do the math. You have $1,000 and you lose 50%, it goes to 500. You gain 50%, well, that's only $250. It goes back to 750. So the actual return during that two-year period has been negative 25%. The average is zero, the actual is negative 25, or an, you know, if you divide that over two years, the annualized average return is negative 12 and a half. Well, that's what's interesting. People are looking at these prospectuses and the returns and, and they're getting numbers that say, hey, yeah, your average over this last number of years has been 6% or 7%. And they're, well, well, it doesn't look like it. Well, that's because that's the average, not the actual. Folks, anytime you ever have to take and include a negative year in that equation. If, if what you're averaging ever has a negative year, the average and the actual will never be the same. Therefore, in the stock market, because it often has negative years, they're not the same. But in the strategies I talk about in both tax-free retirement and stress-free retirement, it's contractually guaranteed that consumers will never have a negative year. Therefore, their average returns and actual returns are the same. And it's the only place I know of where that's true, that has any kind of market-like exposure. I'll be honest. And here's I heard what, you. I, you knew where I was going with oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, here's what bothers me the most, Patrick, is as you're doing that, I'm thinking, here's the same scenario. If you gain 50% on that $1,000 in the first year, you now have 1,500, right? Because you gained 500. If you lose 50% in the second year, you're at that same 750. That's right. I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up. I had one advisor tell me, this is an advisor. He read this and he goes, I literally fell off the couch when I read that. He goes, I had no idea. And he goes, and I thought you were tricking me. I thought maybe if I did the math the opposite way, it would work out better. He goes, it's not, it's the same. Yeah. You're exactly right. Yeah. No, good math. Oh, good grief. That's terrible. So again, average returns that you see spoken to you are not always the same as an actual return. And that's a big deal unless you eliminate losses. Yeah. Yeah. Here's some other figures that uh, you and I were talking about earlier, and I, I want you to comment on them. The U.S. stock market had, uh, we, we just know it's been nuts this year, right? It's just been terrible. Uh, the S&P 500 was down 35% in March, and then it rocketed back up to 64% from March's low by just the end of August. Those are just crazy fluctuations. What are your thoughts on how an individual can both protect themselves from big losses as well as take advantage of opportunities in a market like this? I mean, this, this is tough to even keep our heads above water, it seems, when, we, when we're looking at all this financial, financial information. Oh, it's just been crazy. I mean, again, really, that is the heart, Eric, of, of the two books that we spent the most time talking about today, tax for retirement and stress for retirement. It talks about, well, let me give you this example is, you know, I ask clients all the time, if you could have a guaranteed return, it would never be negative any given year. So it'd be between zero and say seven or eight percent. Would you sleep better at night? Would you prefer that? It might even be more than the 7 or 8%, but we'll just use that for conservative numbers. Or would you rather, it, the stock market's best, S&P 500's best year is about positive 35% roughly, and its worst year is about negative 35%. Knowing that retirement's coming, it could happen at any given year, do you think consumers would sleep better and feel better knowing that in any given year their account could be up 35 or down 35 or 6, 7, or 8? but never down ever. And so I think that's what I want to talk about. This year has been a perfect example of why the, the strategies that I talk about in these two books are so imperative because the long-term winning strategy is 
being able to get inflation beating. That's the problem right now is because uh, safe money is hard, is not beating inflation. But this is safe money that is, and it's consistently beating inflation over the long term with never taking a loss. And let me give you one last example uh, before we leave this question. Probably one of my favorite analogies because I think it's exactly what people could have the choice of doing if they want to follow what I've talked about. Is if Let's say someone goes to Las Vegas and they walk into any given casino and they see a blackjack table there. Well, the normal kind of blackjack if they've played it before is let's say you're sitting with a dealer and you bet $10.00. On any given hand, you're either going to win $10 or lose $10. Now, if you tie, you push, but we'll eliminate that for a minute. But it's someone always wins and someone always loses. That's how the market works currently. But what if there was a blackjack table right next door to this one in the same room that said this, hey, if you win your hand, you're not going to make, even though you bet $10, we're only going to give you $5. But if you lose, you get to keep your $10 and bet it again. Which table would you rather sit at? Oh, I'll be sitting next to you at that table. (laughs) Exactly. Because think about it. You're never losing. You're saying, hey, I'm willing to give up part of the – I don't need all the gain. I'm I'm willing to take part of the gain and never take a loss. And see what happens is it turns the gambling proposition, which blackjack is – into a non-gambling proposition altogether, and that is you're just either making money or pushing, making money or pushing each and every hand. And that's the opportunity that folks can have if they take a look at these books, talk to an advisor maybe who gave them one of these books, and look at a strategy that will allow them on a much bigger scale than blackjack to do that very same thing with their retirement savings. Patrick, this has been fantastic. You have shared a ton of great information, a lot of little tips and and tidbits out of these books that you've written. How can people get a hold of you and how can they get a hold of these books? Well, if they want to purchase these books, the best place to go, actually, because it's the best price and even better than Amazon. Yes, they're on Amazon. But if they go to my website, taxfreebook.com, that's just like it sounds, taxfreebook, all one word, dot com, then they can go ahead and purchase that book and we'll ship it right to him. Oh, that's fantastic. I appreciate that. Patrick Kelly, again, thank you so much for your time today. Eric, thank you as well. It's been a pleasure. You bet. And the last thank you goes to you, the listening audience. Thank you for tuning in and listening to the Breakthrough Advisor podcast. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when we come out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This also makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your colleagues. Again, thanks for listening today. For everyone at InsureMark, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Breakthrough Advisor podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of InsureMark. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. 